thought that there would not be an audience for this publication. Never for a minute did I doubt that. Now, I had a lot of doubts as to whether you know, we could we could make it work structurally and financially and sell enough ads and get the right people involved. You never know. But, but in terms of uh, the concept, I, I was never the least bit uh, hesitant to try the concept. I knew, it would, it, I knew there was enough people. There were enough people here to make it go. But we've been lucky. I mean, so crazy things happen. One, you know, but some of our two of our most popular features are News of the Weird. And, yeah, these are the weird. And, da and, and, da and Dave Barry, Dave Barry, the, the nationally syndicated humorist. And when when I started Leo, News of the Weird was already it's a syndicated thing, and there, and there was another publication in town that already had the rights to it. Well, coincidentally, right after I started Leo, they went out of business, so I was able to get News of the Weird for us, and that was an important stroke of good fortune, and uh, it, it helped us a lot. Then with Dave Barry. Dave Barry was not being carried in Louisville. And I didn't know why, but I had seen him in other newspapers. So I called his syndicator. And I I asked, you know, I said, I know this is a stupid question, and I, but I just thought I'd call. Uh, I wondered if Dave Barry was available in Louisville. Because uh, I thought that the courier had probably owned the rights to him, but, to uh, him, but, didn't, but that. didn't choose to publish him, as they do with some comic strips and clothing. And so she says, where are you looking? I said, this is Louisville, Kentucky. And she kind of laughed. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's not available, but let me just run it through the computer. So she runs it through the computer. And she says, you're not in Lexington, right? I said, no, Louisville, 70 miles away. She said, well, I'm surprised, but it's available. So I said, well, wow, that's terrific. How much would it cost me? And she said, well, See, what's your circulation? And I told her at the time, and she said, oh, $6.50 a week. I couldn't believe it. So I said, okay, I think we can afford that. And uh, so that's how we got wow. Dave Barry. And we just go, now we pay a lot more for him now. Uh -huh. Because I later found out that we didn't have an exclusive at six fifty a week. We just had the right. So, but uh, he's still a bargain. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, we, so we got lucky in, along the way. Uh, and, and that was an important. We had... You know, there's, a, there's a great deal of talent in the community. We've found columnists over the years who have been good, and local writers. And, uh, so, you know, John, some people associate the, the term alternative uh, newspaper with uh, the seedy side or the or, or where we get X-rated uh, movies or something like that, and. Uh, it's been striking to me that uh, even in recent issues, uh, Leo has uh, been championing, uh, championing um, issues like uh, violence, uh, nonviolence, and uh, a number of social issues, really. And, and uh, it seems to me to be a very interesting mix that's developing between entertainment and. Uh, Cutting edge uh, reporting. Well, it's interesting yeah, that the lineage of the alternative press, it's called. And alternative is a strange word because some people say, okay, you mean alternative lifestyles. Well, it's not that, you know, alternatives have pretty common words. Yeah, it's kind of as vague as alternative yeah, music. But the alternative press has a very specific um, ancestry and you can see why we do what we do. Almost all, the, the modern day alternative press all, all grew out of the underground newspapers of the 60s. And these were papers that were published on college campuses and dorms. Sometimes they were just one sheet of paper, flyers, and sometimes they were out of people's basements. But they all had two, thing, two things in common. Initially they had, they were crusading newspapers, they were against the war in Vietnam, and they were for the civil rights movement. So they, they came with a very uh, anti-establishment, from a very anti-establishment, anti-government perspective, and a very cynical one, very uh, skeptical of government um, action or inaction. They began to evolve into more sophisticated publications. You saw the Village Voice 
uh, Stark, which is still yeah. the granddaddy of all alternatives. And, and, and Rolling Stone. I mean, those are two of the, the, mm. the first alternative publications. Well, they stayed, they were very active in the anti war movement, you know, Hunter Thompson and uh, all that. As the anti war movement grew and got involved in rock and roll and drugs, those publications tended to, to discuss politics and the music drug culture. And so all of the, the alternative press kind of involved in those two traditions. Now, drugs became passe and so forth, so the drug thing fell out pretty much. But you can still see music and politics, music and, and social issues. Those are the two great traditions of the alternative press. So there were, and we're basically half kind of public affairs, current affairs, and we're half entertainment and music. And uh, the other thing that characterizes the alternative press is we are, we consider ourselves advocacy, practitioners of advocacy journalism. We come to our stories with a point of view. Uh, now that doesn't mean we don't try, we don't make it a point to incorporate all the journalistic standards that any publication or any television news operation would want to. We're fair, we're honest, factual. But you know where we stand on the issues when we write about stuff. And even if it's a, a news story, we, we do it for a reason. And, and again, those are pretty common characteristics of the alternative media. Well, let me ask you this in the brief time we have mm -hmm. left. Uh, where do you see Leo going from here? I mean, you seem pretty upbeat, pretty excited. I mean, and, and something yeah. you said earlier is that you, you uh, said that if you had done something sooner, you would have been that much further ahead. That, that makes me wonder, you know, what your grand final plan is. Is it well, take over the world from Louisville? No, you know, I've never been into power, I've never been into control. I don't I did this because I thought it was a good idea. I never did it for the money. You enjoy it? Anyway, I love doing it. Uh, and I think everybody here has the same perspective on it. Uh, we have fun doing what we're doing. We don't want to create a media empire. It's not mm -hmm. what we're about. Uh, we see an opportunity for a lot of reasons to be a much bigger player in doing real solid important journalism and that is to explore community problems it might be statewide problems regional problems but to, to get inside some big institutions where we see things happening that, that maybe shouldn't happen or should be exposed anyway because not many other media are doing it the corporate corporate owned media chains the big corporate right. chains uh, aren't doing as much of that, and they're not allowing their papers or television stations to do as much of it. That creates opportunities for us. And uh, so that's really, from a, kind of a conceptual basis, where I see us evolving. Uh, again, it's not a matter of size, money. But you, are, but you are growing. The size is, keeps getting bigger, right? Absolutely, and that's, fortunately, we, we continue to grow in readership, and and credibility and advertisers understand now uh, that we're an effective advertising tool as well and so we're getting support because that's our only source of revenue it's, it's, it's a free publication uh, so yeah and that's very gratifying and as, we, as we grow and from an advertising perspective we'll do more editorial great that, that's that sounds wonderful and, and uh, it's really been just a nice experience having you uh, be with us this evening and uh, Leo Magazine uh, certainly is uh, one of the primary generators of uh, culture in the Louisville area and uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, John Yarmouth has been with Leo from the very mm -hmm. conception through its uh, adolescence, and uh, who knows where it's going to end up. Thank you very much, John. Well, thank you, thank you.